Today I have a dress for you that's super beginner friendly, very few seams so you can really let your fabric shine here. A really classic design that you can wear for years to come. I've made two in different sizes, a print, a solid, stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I have some neat sewing to share with you. This is the Tessa sheath dress from Love Notions. It is an older pattern that has been through a process of retesting, redrafting and improving the size range up to 5x. I have made this pattern previously three times already. One was a super wearable muslin where I confirmed the length adjustments I needed to make to fit my own body. I can still wear it with something on top because I have some issues I'll discuss later on. Then I went ahead and used the bodice and matched it to one of the skirts from the Sibyl Illusion skirt collection. The Tessa sheath dress has been designed to have a separate bodice if you want. You'll find a separate cut line on the pattern front and back. And then you can mash on any of the seven styles included in the Sibyl Illusion skirt collection. So this pattern can go a really long way once you customize the fit to your bodice and everything you can make a ton of dresses. I also already had fun with the color block version I made. Super fun, just cut up different pieces from the same front and back pieces and created a different look, although it is still the same fit, the same pattern. And now for this update, I was actually a pattern tester and I made a version for myself and one for my sister-in-law. You can see the line out here, the features. It's really classic, simple style. It is for neat fabrics. Woven fabrics will not work. And for the necklines, you have a scoop neckline, which is always my preference, or you can choose a higher neckline, a bateau neckline. Those are options. These you can finish with bindings or facings. You have both options in the pattern. I've done one of each. As an option, the pattern also has front and back yokes that you can add on. For these, you can use contrast fabrics. The pattern also states that the yokes could be made out of woven fabrics. Maybe if you have some lace or something that doesn't stretch or a really nice piece of woven, you could use that. I have not used that option. I prefer to keep it all neat. There are five sleeve lengths, sleeveless, short, elbow, three quarters and long. I have one sleeveless and one with short sleeves to show you today. At the back, you will have a center back seam with some shaping. I would recommend you embrace that seam because it will help you get a really good custom fit. If you have sway back issues, it's way easier to adjust if there's already a seam there. And it will just look better. You know, at the back, we're not flat. We usually do have some shaping and some curves at the back. So that seam is always a helper, it's always a friend. I always appreciate a pattern that has it. Also easier to cut your pattern pieces and use less fabric sometimes when you're trying to get it out of a small piece. You have two different hem lengths, one that is designed to be above the knee and one longer below the knee sort of midi length. Because the Tessa sheath dress has been re-updated, there is a special pricing going to happen all this weekend. Today, Friday, only today, you can get it 60% off, that is $5. But then tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, you can also get it at a discounted price, 25% off. But you know, it's better to get it 60% off, right? So don't wait. <laughs> I'll leave you my affiliate link in the description box. That link will take you directly there. And if you type in my coupon code, Karina10, you'll get an extra 10% added on to the already discounted price. So it's a great option to use my coupon code because you'll get them for even less, which is awesome. My coupon code Karina10 is active always. So if you wanna get other patterns at any time, it will always get you a 10% off. So that's amazing. Everything is linked down below. I also have a really comprehensive blog post that has all my five versions there, all the video links, all the information is put into one blog post if you want to have a really nice general look there. I'll leave that link down below also. You need fabrics with at least 20% horizontal stretch. That's the minimum. I think you could make it if your fabric stretches a little bit more. Just be careful, it's not too much. It also has to be medium to heavy weight. Do not try to make this in something too light because it'll cling to you, it won't look very good. It would be good to have also some vertical stretch in the fabric, but if it has minimal vertical stretch, I think the design will work fine. The recommended fabrics could be Ponty, Jacquard Knits, Scuba, Double Knits, maybe some athletic knits, heavier cotton lycra. Other non-traditional fabrics that could work really well are stretch velvet. 
just make sure it stretches <laughs> some velvets do not stretch and also I would love to make this in a stretch lace I would make it lined of course I would line it with a lightweight knit underneath so that it's not she obviously so there are quite a few options I would stay away from rayon spandex modal spandex those types of fabrics that are too lightweight all the five versions I've ever made, I've used Ponty, I've used a Jacquard knit, I've used rayon spandex, which is one I don't recommend, but I bypass that by lining it. It's fully lined with a lightweight knit, so together they do sort of work. And this time I used an athletic knit and a Liverpool knit. Because the pattern has been updated, has a full size range now from extra small to 5X, Love Notions has been updating most of the older patterns. So there are quite a lot of patterns already available in the full size range. And that goes up to a bust of 57 and a half inches and a hip of 59 and a half inches. Now with this update, the Tessa sheath dress now has a full bust option, which it didn't have in the past. So that is amazing. If you have a larger sewing cup size, D and above, the full bust option is going to give you a little bit more ease at the bust. So you're seeing a little chart here that shows the ease of the standard bust option. You will have negative ease at the bust, which is fine because you have a neat fabric that stretches. So it's about an inch of negative ease. Not too much. I've sewn patterns that have a lot more negative ease, so it's not that much. At the waist, minimal ease, about half an inch bigger than your waist measurement and then at hips you have about one inch of positive ease now if you are choosing the full bust option because you have a larger sewing bust cup size that means that when you measure your upper bust and your full bust you have four or more inches of difference then that is the case where the full bust option will work for you in that case you have two extra inches of ease at the bust the waist and the hip the fit could look quite different if you look at tester photos in some versions you'll see more ease at the hips it's probably because the full bust option was used in my case i use a standard bust and so i get that fitted look everywhere bust waist and hip in the size chart you will also find bicep measurements which is super useful if that is an adjustment that you typically need to do it's really good to know what the biceps are for each size so that you know if you can adjust or not now as for personal fitting i mentioned i had made a wearable muslin in my first attempt 2019 i believe and i made it just as is back then i was a size large currently i use a size extra large but i figured out that the waist height was too high for me meaning my waist was a little lower i am a bit taller anyway there is a three inch difference between my height and the height that love notions patterns are drafted for so Love Notions drafts for five foot five and I'm five foot eight. So I knew that the waist was too high. I kept tugging it down and it just wasn't correctly placed for my height. Also, there is a bust apex point on the pattern and that was also too high for me. Mine was lower. So there is one pattern adjustment that I know I need to make and that is just to add an extra inch right above the bust apex. That brings the fullest part of the bust down because on the side seam, you see the curve of the bust the fullest part actually needs to be a little bit lower to match my body. By doing that, I achieve two purposes, lower my bust point, which I need, and also add an inch of length to the bodice area so that the waist notch is actually at my waist. So it's a two for one fix. I really enjoy that. And I tend to do that a lot with neat patterns from Love Notions, just because of my height difference also. With my initial dress, the red one I made, way back when i also figured out i needed a little bit of a sway back adjustment it's not an adjustment that is too large it's basically taking a wedge of length tapering to nothing at the side seams and in my case i just need five eighths of an inch that solves that little bit of extra fabric i have there pulling at the small of my back it wasn't that much but it was noticeable and it was disturbing me so i decided to fix that for the hem i decided to cut mine between the knee length and the midi length just because I'm taller and that length actually hits above my knee. If I would have cut the knee length, I would have ended up with a mini dress. <laughs> in Up Close and Sew Personal, you'll see a lot of the sewing. It's a very short segment, under four minutes long. It's a very easy dress to put together. If you are newer to sewing, this will help you. Now, one thing I'm going to point out, the way that you are going to see me sew my dress is how I would typically sew a woven dress. And it's just because of my fabric choice, I felt that this athletic knit was quite dense, quite thick, quite structured. And doing serge seams was gonna be super bulky from how I could feel it. So I decided to sew the main seam with the sewing machine and press the seams open that means that I surged all the raw edges of my dress first and then started sewing it like I would sew a woven dress 
but if I was working with another type of knit, I probably would have just serged the sides and the back and everything would have turned out even faster than it took to make this one. So let's have a look. Here are the basic pattern pieces for my Tessa sheath dress. I'm using a pretty heavy weight athletic knit with a beautiful print. I have a front on the fold that will be the same for all the options. Mine is a standard bust. If you are doing a full bust option, there will be a more pronounced curve there on the side. The back always has a center back seam. There is shaping there. You really need that shaping. I would not suggest trying to get rid of that and just cutting it on the fold. There is an optional yoke front and back and I'm using an optional yoke at the back only to get this dress to fit my fabric. I have a short sleeve with a different fabric because this is a pattern test and I did want to test the fit of the sleeve but my final dress will be sleeveless. You can see up closer the binding for the armholes and the neckline that are provided in the pattern but there's also a facing option that you can use. Here you can see what the shapes of those are. The back facing will be exactly the same for the scoop and the bateau neckline but the front will be sort of different. This one that you see here is the scoop. The bateau neckline at the front will be just more more flat and more shallow. I won't be sewing it directly on the serger so I have surged all the edges of all the pieces and I'm actually going to be using my sewing machine to sew it at 3.8 seam allowance. Here you can see I'm starting to sew the back seam. The edges have been surged separately and I'll go ahead and sew. I find this method less bulky on this type of fabric. If it was a lighter weight fabric then I would go ahead and sew on the serger. I just adapt the way I sew to the type of fabric I'm going to use. For all these seams I'm going to use a shallow zigzag to allow stretch and the serger just to clean up the edges of the seams. I'll be pressing everything open. Here you can see the back piece pinned to my yoke at the back. It's already surged also and I'm going to do this horizontal seam also with a shallow zigzag. Then I go off to the shoulder seams. If my knit was really really stretchy and didn't have that great recovery I would be stabilizing these shoulders but this fabric doesn't really have that issue and it's also sleeveless so I'm not doing that but consider doing that if you are going to add sleeves and if your fabric doesn't have great recovery. Then I'm off to the side seams, really long seams, the dress is so so fun and easy to put together. you see me sewing the seam of the sleeve first and that's because I'm gonna sew it on the round but if you were gonna do it on the flat then you would pin it and sew it on the flat and then do the side seams. My order is inversed because I prefer to put mine on the round. It's up to you, it's your choice. Here you can see my sleeve pinned inside the armhole. Because this is a knit, the sleeve should fit one-on-one -on, -one on the armhole. You wouldn't need to stretch or ease anything into anywhere. Very easy to sew in a knit sleeve like this. If you are using the yoke at the back where the seam of the yoke unites with the back piece, that will actually match the double yoke of the sleeve. Because for my dress I'm using the binding option, I've got my my binding here and instead of folding it in a quarter of an inch to keep it neat inside because my fabric is so thick and bulky I'm just going to serge that raw edge and that's how it's going to be finished inside. I think it looks really nice. Here you've seen it all sewn into one of the armholes. I used a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm snipping away there so that this can fold in nicely. This is pretty curved. I will be doing exactly the same thing for the armholes and the neckline, all the same. And then I will go ahead and understitch. To understitch, I just push all this little seam allowance underneath the binding piece and then sew on the edge. I help myself with a blind hem press a foot and I move the needle to the left to get a really nice clean sew there right on the edge and then I can just fold it in. I like to hand baste that and then I top stitch it and then it's done. Super super easy. This fabric so easy to work with. Here is my Tessa sheath. I decided to make this one sleeveless. In the pictures you were seeing before with the muslin I did sew one on a separate sleeve just to check the fit of the sleeve. I didn't have enough of this fabric to sew on a sleeve and plus I wanted it sleeveless anyway. <laughs> At the back I do have the back yoke not because I thought it was going to add anything visually because it doesn't it's just to get it to fit into my fabric. I'd made a pullover with this fabric before I quite a blocked one and I did have an amount left that I thought was going to be good for a sheath dress but I had nothing nothing left. So that's what I've done I've chosen the scoop neckline for this one and binding you saw how I did that how I finished it it's very neat 
I really like it for this type of fabric. I think it's non-bulky and it's nice and clean for both the armholes and the neckline. And then it's just two side seams and a back seam. So simple. I thought the hem was going to look cleaner hand hem, so I did that by hand. I didn't really want to go in there with a twin needle, especially because this fabric is so thick and so densely woven. I knew that if I tried to machine hem, it wouldn't look nice. So why not hand hem? I'm never against it. I do it a lot. I do it a lot, even with neat projects. This is how it looks inside. It's easy to see because my wrong side is white. I have my side seams all pressed open. All of the seams were done with 3 8 I have my hem. I have already worn it twice to go to church. Once while I was still in Brazil and just this past weekend. So it's already been worn. I love it. It's really, really easy to just throw on. It needs minimal pressing. Easy to throw in a suitcase and just wear. I'm really happy to have brought this in my trip. Super easy to care for. I style my things only with shoes. And in this case, I have a pair of silver sandals with a short heel. Love them. And I thought it went really well with, with these light tones. This is my Tessa sheath dress. Size extra large with a standard bust. And I used a structured athletic knit with a beautiful print. Love the fabric. I made a few length adjustments to get mine to fit above the knee. I have a scoop neckline option and sleeveless. Although you can also do a higher neckline and there are five sleeve lengths if that's what you want. Up closer you can see that the waist hits my actual waist. I added length above the bust point to achieve that and at the back I did a 5 8 of an inch sway back adjustment for a great custom fit. There's no excess fabric there and that's why I love a center back seam so much because it's easier to adjust. I have a scoop neckline although there is a bateau neckline that's higher. I only opted for the yoke to optimize what I had for fabric. I'm really happy with the armhole cover. I've chosen to to use the binding method to finish the neckline although there's also a facing option a really great classic basic that fits really well that's easy to whip up and sew and lets your gorgeous fabrics shine not many seams here perfect to not disrupt beautiful prints I mentioned that I was in a pattern test recently for this pattern and when I got to Chile the pattern test was still running and I thought you know I might as well make another one in another size just to test another size also so I asked my sister-in-law if she liked the style of course she did so I made hers in a navy Liverpool she has a very different body type to mine she's five foot six she's slender she has a smaller bus cap size so it was really easy for me to take her measurements measure the pattern and figure out I didn't need to do any changes for her. So it was a pretty relaxed sew. I made her a straight size small. The hem is also a little longer to hit sort of mid knee. That's where she wanted it. In her case, I used also the scoop neckline, but I have a facing inside. This is a Liverpool knit. I have a short sleeve and I've also hand hemmed that and the bottom. I also a type of fabric I didn't think was going to look very nice if I just did it with a machine. But that's personal preference. If you are totally against hand hemming, don't do it. Do it with a machine. It's up to you. I just show you what I like and I never think it's a waste of time to do it by hand. I know it's quite relaxing actually. And this is how the facing looks inside. I did hand sew it there also. For the facings, they are interfaced with light and neat interfacing, one that stretches also. And I block fused. I just got the piece of fabric larger than the pattern pieces, fused that and then put my facings on and then I make sure that the facings don't shrink. I know from experience that these types of knits when you fuse they just go really small. It's happened to me before so I'd rather avoid that with block fusing. I will do that every single time for woven and for knits. A classic in solid. She just styled it with some tan heels but she says she's got blazers and cardies and she can dress this up and down. She's really happy. So let's see how it looks on her. The Tessa sheath dress I made my sister-in-law as an early Christmas present. This is a size small with a standard bust. No fitting changes needed for her. Only add a little extra length at the hem. This is a navy Liverpool knit, medium weight. She also has a scoop neckline, but this time I use the facing option. She does have short sleeves here, great shoulder fit, and it's a great basic that she can dress up and down. A solid dress can be really versatile in your wardrobe. Here, she's just got it with some beautiful heels, and she's really happy with the dress. Dance with me. 
Look, I really sew for other people. The only people I sew for are my really, really close family members that really appreciate the work that it takes. My sister-in-law, my mom, and my mother-in-law are the only women I sew for, and also my nieces. So it's a real pleasure to sew for her, give her a gift like this. She's recently had her third baby. I have a third niece, she's nine months old. So she deserves nice things, and I've made her another dress that you'll see a little while later on. It's a woven one, super beautiful. Now about sway back adjustments, I think there's quite a lot of misunderstanding about them and I am planning to make a really nice video for you in my feeding series that is ongoing and those videos take me a long time to put together because I always want to show you an ill-fitting garment and then a well-fitting garment so it does take a while, I do put a lot of effort into those but just know that you will get a nice video about sway back adjustment and that is going to help you for both knit and woven projects I know it is an adjustment I have to make quite frequently, not always but quite frequently, I'm never shocked when I need it so if you have that problem of ex excess fabric pulling at the back it might be due to a lot of reasons and I really want to go in depth into that so expect that video to pop up. Now, as always, I'm trying to bite off more than I can chew. I had plans to make another one for myself. It just did not happen. It was impossible. But let me show you what my idea was. It was going to be amazing. I have this sweater knit. It's got the plaid printed diagonally, as you can see there. So my idea was to cut this with a center front seam and a center back seam and do a V with the chevrons like that. So that was my idea. As you know, I'm with family. I just do not have the same context as I usually do. And time ran out. There was no way I could get it done in time for this video. But it's in the back of my mind, giving you an idea. If you have a knit with a stripe, maybe you want to do that chevron effect. It always looks so pretty and it would have been a stunning dress. So I leave it for the future. I have the idea fresh in my mind. I'm really excited. I hope I can get it done someday. Don't forget that the Tessa sheath dress is only $5. But just today, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's still on a sale price, 25% off. So you can still get it for a bit less on Saturday and Sunday, but today it's 60% off. So it's a good time to get it now. Don't forget to use my code Karina10 or together when you go through your checkout, because you'll get 10% on top of the already discounted price. So it's a good option, go through my affiliate link to go directly there and then type in the code and you'll be good to go. I hope you have a great weekend. I know I have a great weekend planned. Can't wait. I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye.